The White House is history. Paris is burning. My God, where will they strike next? Sir, we're being exterminated. God help us. We destroyed the kingdom. The kingdom? Really? Yes. That's it? That's it. Anybody inside? Nope. Huh. So just the kingdom. Attention, Seattle. We have cracked the aliens' code. We can destroy their spacecraft, but we have to do it all at the same time. Prepare to launch at my command. Roger that. Prepare to launch. No, hold, hold on, hold on. What? Well, I'm, I mean, you know, they only destroyed the kingdom. I mean, let's, let's, you know, let's hold on and see what else they do. So they blew up that blob building on Queen Anne. And wait a minute. They also got that Peruvian band that plays outside of Nordstrom's. That's not so bad, is it? Fire! Fire before it's too late! Sir, he wants us to fire. But just no, tell him we're not ready. Just... Uh, uh, can't ache at any uire. What the hell is going on out there? The entire world is waiting for you! Uh, sir, he's pretty steamed. Memorial Stadium? Ah, oh, that's a good place. All right, that's it. Prepare to fire. Hold on a second, sir. Don't rush him. Let's just see what happens next, okay? All right, good. Another marriage proposal. <laughs> Dr. Reed asked Phyllis to tie the knot. I want to see the wedding night. See, they're just off a little bit, sir. Memorial Stadium and Como are really close together. That's right. Men! Execute your orders! This is our last chance! Sir, he wants us to execute the orders. Okay, okay, but just one more, just one more. Yes! <laughs> They're friendly! <laughs> Uh-oh, sir. You're not gonna like this. The spacecraft is hovering over. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you and welcome, welcome to our new season. Our slogan as always, as you saw, don't mess with dicks. This is our new season. <laughs> it's quite a week actually to return. As you know, the president was in town this week. He spoke at the public market, put out an open saxophone case in front of him, picked up some spare change. Which is <laughs> Not a big fundraiser, but, you know, doesn't need a lot. He's way ahead. Just a few, you know, spare change is fine. On Tuesday, you also know the governor's race was narrowed down to Gary Locke. Okay, good. A lot of support here. And Ellen Craswell. Okay, okay. Now, I, I'm not saying that Locke is overconfident, but the moving van is parked in a load zone outside... <laughs> The governor's mansion right now. Mona, Mona Lee's in there. She's measuring the curtains. 
Lowry's taking his time. He's packing up his record collection, his stuff. He's putting it in boxes. He's taking his time. Now, I think that if Craswell wins, remember, she was the one who sponsored the castration bill in the legislature. <laughs> the castration for a variety of sexual offenses. That was her claim to fame until now. If she wins, I think Lowry's going to be out of there in a flash. <laughs> Not going to be hanging around. <laughs> On the bright side, if she loses, all those giant Ellen Craswell signs all over the state will be used to make housing for over 60,000 homeless people. <laughs> yeah. The signs are everywhere. They're a little confusing. That's actually George Washington's picture, not, not Craswell's. <laughs> her, her hair is a little different. Granted, not much, but a little. On the other hand, Gary Locke's haircut looks like he's taken a cue from Mo of the Three Stooges, you know. It's going to be a fun hair day for both. And it, I think all in all, it's going to be a fun campaign. And another interesting event this summer, Jason Sprinkle, the doofus bomber. You guys remember this? The parked a truck in the middle of Westlake Square with the word bomb on it, was thrown in jail, and his defense is that it was an artistic statement. And now, I guess the guy who's robbing all those banks, they call him the briefcase bandit, he says it's really, he's doing a performance piece. That's what he says. It's like, <laughs> it's just a big dance. And uh, the Unabomber says uh, that his manifesto is actually an application for a grant from the National uh, <laughs> for the Arts. So, Anyway, all in all, it was an interesting summer. This is actually the last official day of the summer. In fact, this is the last half hour of the summer. So let's take a fond look back at the late, great summer of 96. <laughs> Movie Town News takes a look at Seattle summer 96. Seafair weekend came to Seattle. There was a little rain, but it didn't dampen the spirits of the thousands who came to watch the Torchlight Parade. But no matter what the weather, it's always blue skies for the Blue Angels, who finally returned to Seattle, this time flying over Queen Anne and Magnolia, prompting some complaints from the locals. It was so loud. We couldn't hear ourselves talk to discuss the new colors for the Land Cruiser. The house shook so hard that the Ikea catalog fell off the dining room table. <laughs> Seahawks return! The Seattle Seahawks make a triumphant return to the Northwest after languishing in Southern California. Go get them, boys. That's the spirit. And speaking of sports, this local track star was truly a unique story at the 96 Olympics. He was the only Olympic athlete who didn't have a friend, family member, or coach die in some horrible accident just before the games. And talking about accidents, this was the summer little old Seattle joined the big time with its own Planet Hollywood, where excited locals lined up to see real props from hit movies, like Tony Danza's Eyebrow. And the presses were rolling this summer at the Seattle Times, where publisher Frank Blethen made headlines himself when he shot the neighbor's dog for messing on his lawn. Sorry, pooch. Better poop on the P.I. the next time, said the peeve publisher. And that's the headlines for Seattle's Great Summer of 96. All right, it's great to be back. We have a wonderful show, and stay with us, because we'll be right back. If you dine out often, you'll want to sign up for Dining a la Card. Every Dining a la Card member saves 20% on each restaurant bill. If my check is $50, I get back $10. If my check is $100, I get back $20. And if my check is $200, I get back $40. If my check is $30, I get back $6. If it's $80, I get back $16. If it's $150, I get back $30. If it's $90, I get back $18. If it's $60, I get back $12. Excuse me, uh, what happened to the announcer? He had to leave for a while. Go ahead and fill. If my check is $220, I get back $44. If my check is $175, I get back. Yeah. 
$35. Excuse me. Any sign of them at all? Nope. If my check is, <laughs> hell, I don't know, $142.65, <laughs> I get back $28.53. <laughs> if my check is, say, $365.92, <laughs> I get back <clears throat> about $73.18. <laughs> if my uh, check is $600, I get back $120. Although, I can't imagine spending that much on dinner. <laughs> Not on my salary. I don't know about you. Besides, that's, that's a lot of food. <laughs> a lot of food. Seems kind of a waste in uh, this day and age for, you know, like one person to eat that much food. <laughs> but with all the trouble in the world, <laughs> All the problems we've got, well, not all of us, but around the world, all the, that's just, seems like too much. <laughs> Excuse me. Where the f Dining a la carte is available in thousands of restaurants worldwide. Call today. Rocks. And with me is the lead singer of the greatest band on the planet, Mr. Eddie Vedder of Pearl Jam. Yeah. How you doing? Yeah. 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 Hi, uh, how you doing, Eddie? It's good, but you know, what's it mean being a rock star thing, you know? I mean, what's it all about but uh, the fans, you know? <laughs> okay, uh, Eddie. Uh, and that's why we have with us two interpreters to translate what Eddie is actually saying, okay? So this is Jane O'Neill, an interpreter at the United Nations. Now, Jane, what languages do you speak? I speak fluent Russian, Chinese, and Vedder. Okay, great, great. <laughs> and tell us, what did Eddie just say? He said, I'm fine, how are you? Oh, well, I'm very well, thank you very much, Eddie, for asking. Uh, you know, I don't know what, uh, if it's love, but uh, they do, uh they have these awards anyways, but, uh, you know, it's okay, that's cool. <laughs> okay, uh, we'll get back to that one later. But let me introduce now our other interpreter. This is Joey Ramone of the Ramones, everybody. Yeah. yeah. You know, you know, this Eddie, he's a freaking tuber, but I love you, man. Okay, well put, well put. Now, Eddie, your new album is called No Code. What does it mean? Well, you know, uh... <laughs> That's the thing, and if you're just there, and it's like the fans, but they're not like idol worshippers, you know, because that's not what it's all about. Okay, uh, Jane? Duh. Oh, he says that uh, no code is slang for I'd like to hold your shoe. <laughs> okay, yeah, well, uh, thanks, uh, but no, thanks. Anyway, Eddie. <laughs> now, uh, will you be touring for this album, or...? Oh, well, well, the music's the thing, and the fans, and it doesn't mean that you're better or he's better or she's better but you know it's okay uh, either one of you guys get that oh he says they'll be playing at least six dates including detroit and boston oh cool okay okay so what happens after that for pearl jam well you know it's a band and i'm just one and one and one makes two and that's why i get the best seats at the basketball games for the people who can't because of the ripoffs and again <laughs> why awards uh anybody you know, it sounded like they'd like to make a few more albums, or that camels speak to him with their eyes. 
Okay, uh, Joey? Uh, sorry, e even I don't have a clue on that one. Yeah, okay, so one last question, Eddie. Uh, Eddie, have you uh, settled your dispute with Ticketmaster yet? <sighs> well, you know, uh, who's it for? And if the thing's a corporate whatever, or for love, or just for you and me, but then you start going like when or where, and you have to stop and grow or die. <laughs> Jane? Boy, you know, I'm not sure. I speak classic pre-vitology vetter, and, uh, boy, you know, he just seems to have gone into some hybrid pig vetter. I... I see. Joey. Yeah, I got it. He says, screw Ticketmaster. Yeah, screw Ticketmaster. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's what I meant. Screw Ticketmaster. Wait, well, we, well, we seem to have made some sort of break. Yeah, screw here. Ticketmaster. So that, yeah, that's, that's great. Okay, great, great. Okay, we got yeah, that one. Screw so, oh, got it, Eddie. Okay, thanks. Thanks for joining us here. And for next week, if there's anyone out there who speaks Dylanese, please call us. Okay. <laughs> Meanwhile, buy Pearl Jam's new album, No Code. Yeah. And we'll be right back. is the late report. Well, Ken Baring attended the Seahawks opener three weeks ago, and despite the fact that he said he would never set foot in the kingdom again because it, he said it was too dangerous, Baring defended himself by saying he cannot verify whether or not he did set his foot in the dome because he hasn't seen his feet in years. <laughs> Gresham, Oregon police this week caught some robbers who had stolen one million dollars worth of Nike tennis shoes. According to a spokesperson at the new Nike town in Seattle, that means the robbers made off with at least three pairs of Nikes. <laughs> the Seattle Times announced that they're dropping a ten-part series about the United States foreign trade policy after just one segment because some statements in the article were unconfirmed. Following the announcement, Times publisher Frank Blethen went out and shot at some dogs. <laughs> Republican presidential candidate Bob Dole is trying a unique approach to appeal to younger voters, and I, I believe we have a clip of that. All right. Bob in the mosh pit, all right. Great. Well, neighbor, uh, neighborhoods near the University of Washington are fighting the possibility of the Seahawks using Husky Stadium. They say it's not so much the traffic, they just don't want the stadium to become tainted with loser cooties. <laughs> Stuart Sloan, the CEO of QFC, wants to adopt an elementary school in Seattle's central area with a $1 million per year gift. The money will be used for necessary building repairs as well as the addition of a Cinnabon and a sushi bar. <laughs> Seattle Rain, our new professional women's basketball team, is selling tickets at neighborhood parties using the Tupperware party approach. As a bonus, if you buy season tickets, you also get to burp the player of your choice. <laughs> Finally, the annual wait, wait taste... A wait a minute. What about my Ellen Craswell bit? Uh, sorry, Pat, but... That bit's been cut. I'm nuts. <laughs> Finally, the annual, the annual Taste Kirkland Food Festival w was held this weekend. It'll be followed next, next weekend by the always popular Lick Tuck Willow Festival. <laughs> it's been a late report. Stay with us, because we'll be right back with the final two minutes of summer. As you may know, I lost the election on Tuesday, but I'm not bitter. After all, I'm still the mayor, and I won't have to live in Olympia. Not long ago, at an HBO special, I was chosen funniest mayor in America. Therefore, I might have become the funniest governor. Did any of you even stop to think about that when you voted? You didn't, did you? We're very happy to be back, and we want you to join us, so please call the number right there, 
421-5555. Get some free tickets to come on down and join us. We had a wonderful time. And, yeah, oh, yeah, so did these guys. And we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Show over? Yep. Okay, whatever. If it's the awards thing or the almost live thing, you know, it's still there. They're saying it's over. So do we fade out or we just cool here, huh? Yeah. Which one is it?